Alright guys, so this is going to be the second video in my skills integration challenge 2.3.1.2 series. Make sure that you are at 18% completion before continuing with this video. If for some reason you're not, go ahead and go back to the first video and make sure that you didn't skip a step. I know I said we were going to jump right into the SSH, but then I realized that we forgot one crucial step here, which is setting an IP address for the management interface on the switch. So what it's asking us to do is enable a virtual interface or SVI on the switch in order to give it an IP address for remote access and that'll be used for management purposes. So in order to do that get yourself to global configuration mode once there, type interface VLAN1, or INT for short, INT VLAN1, hit enter. That's going to take us into interface configuration mode for the switch. So let's go ahead and give it the IP address that it asks us to give up there in the box. So just type IP address. And give it the 10.10.10.2 IP address with the slash 24 subnet mask and hit enter. Once you do that, just go ahead and issue a no shut command. That'll bring that SVI online or switch virtual interface. alright let's go ahead and get yourself back to global configuration mode let's go ahead and set up the SSH here so it says configure SSH to secure remote access with the following settings domain name of cisco.com so in order to do that it wants us to give it a domain name it's pretty simple just type domain dash name cisco.com Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> you have to type IP domain dash name cisco.com and hit enter. There we go. No errors. Command took. Next thing we have to do is generate the RSA keys for SSH to work properly. So, in order to do that, we're going to type crypto key generate RSA it says how many bits in the modulus let's change it to 1024 and hit enter don't worry about what any of this means right now I mean if you're a security guy you probably already know I'm not really sure what a lot of this stuff is talking about I just know how to configure it to get it to work so you should get the message here that SSH 1.99 has been enabled but we actually want to be using SSH version 2 so in order to set SSH version 2 all we have to do is type IP SSH version 2 make sure you don't get any errors and that worked so that set it to version 2 for us. I'm not sure why it says it's to uh, 1.99 by default. It's kind of weird but SSH version 2 is what we want to be using. So the next thing we have to do is set up some usernames and passwords. Um, SSH requires a username and password to be able to log into a switch. That's one thing that makes it more secure than something like Telnet. So it's pretty simple to set up. All we have to do is type username admin which is the username it wants us to use and a secret password to CCNA normally you would just type password and then the password that you want but it wants us to encrypt it in the running config so instead of typing password we're going to type secret CCNA 
and that'll encrypt that password in the running config file so no one will be able to see what it is just hit enter alright now that that's done VT, uh, VTY lines only accept SSH connections and use local login for authentication so what it's asking us to do is basically disable Telnet therefore only SSH connections will be accepted by the switch we don't want to be running SSH and Telnet simultaneously because it would kind of defeat the purpose of using Telnet in general so in order to disable um, Telnet on the switch we're gonna go ahead and type uh, line VTY 015 so there's 15 virtual lines on a switch so we are telling the switch to do this configuration for all of them so line VTY 0 space 15 hit enter once in uh, line config here all we gotta do is type transport input SSH that'll go ahead and shut down Telnet for us and allow only SSH connections to remotely access the switch alright so it looks like we have the SSH set up ready to go oh there is one thing I forgot you have to um, after you do the transport input SSH command you also have to give it a login local there we go now it's complete so once you finish that let's go ahead and just uh, set up the IP addresses for our computers here so just look in the box over here and set up the IP addressing for your client PCs so PC1 is going to be the dot .10 host 10.10.10.10 the network is 10.10.10 .10 the host is 10 and give it a slash 24 make sure you change the subnet mask here because it's going to put in a slash 8 subnet mask but by default let's go ahead and type 255.255.255.0 and just close it out. Do the same thing for PC2. Which I've already done it here. But just make sure you give it the dot eleven uh, IP address and make sure you change the subnet mask to a slash twenty four. Alright, so we've gone ahead and configured the basic settings here. We've configured SSH. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Um, I hope you like this video. Please tune into the third video. If you like what you're seeing here, if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe to my page. Um, I just started the page not too long ago, so I'm trying to get as many subscribers as possible. So show some support, guys. Alright, I'll see you guys for the third video. Thanks for watching.